Hiya once again, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair here. I've got a client that I'm going to be setting up a NAS system for, for basic file sharing and backup. This is a Synology DS223 2-bay NAS, and I'm also using these two, two terabyte Iron Wolf drives. The reason why I'm going only with two terabytes is at the moment, there's just a minimal amount of data that they, that they have. Uh, two terabyte is way overkill, but they will be growing. It leaves them room to grow. This is a new company. Uh, I have one of the NASA's set up on one of their other companies that they own. Uh, so they want the same setup and the same deal at this new location. One other thing that I'm doing here, well, I've got a, this is going to be the local backup drive here. This is just a, just a simple uh, four terabyte Seagate USB drive that we'll be using for backups of the local backups of the NAS. And then I'm going to do something that I haven't really never done. This will be interesting. This is, um, this is a mini PC. This is just going to stay on 24-7 uh, at the location, plugged into their network. And this is how I am going to access the NAS. I'm going to remote into this mini PC. And that's the way I'm going to be able to gain access to the NAS. Now I know that Synology offers a web-based solution so you can log in to the NAS. I am not going to be using that actually. This will just give me a local way of accessing the NAS in case technical issues arise. Also, I plan on doing off-site backups through this. I can actually pull the small, currently small amount of data that they have or will have on this. I can pull it off and keep that stored on my end. So that's, that's the plan there. We'll see how that goes. That should go well. And here, of course, is the NAS itself. Just a simple Synology NAS. bay NAS. There you go. One USB 3 port in the front, two USB 3 ports in the back, one network port. That is what we're going to be setting up here. I'm going to be staging this here in my shop and then I'll transport this to the location once the staging has finished. Comes with network cable, power adapter, plug, the usual things that come with the NAS. Quick setup guide, kind of run you through it. Let's go ahead and get these drives installed on this NAS. So the way you get these bays out of here, push up where it says push, obviously, and the bays slide right out. Get our drives out. Okay, these ends here come off. You just pull them out like this. And this one on this side. And then we put the drive in, label side up. Make sure it's snapped in all the way and lined up right. Snap our bracket back on. There we go. Make sure it's flush like that. Same thing on the other side. Okay, make sure it's flush. There's that one. We'll go ahead and do the other one. Then we simply slide our drives back in until you hear it click. There's that one. And there's that one. It's got a pretty cool, like a magnetic, magnetic, not, it's not a magnetic, it's almost like a, a suction cup cover on here. I also like the fact that they have labeled uh, drive one and drive two with the dots. Um, I've had some NASA's where I'd have to literally put a piece of tape and label them because uh, I'd make sure I know which one's one and which one's two. Uh, put that on there. Press it into place. Look at that. Pretty nice. So this little guy, uh, it sports a Realtek 
ARM processor. It's a four core processor at 1.7 gigahertz and it only supports two gigs of memory in this. And let me tell you, for what this is going to be doing, that's all they need. It's simply just sharing files, no video, anything like that, nothing special, just file sharing. This is perfect for that. So this guy is ready to get plugged up and attached to my network here. After we do that, I'll uh, get into this little mini PC and let's see if we can pick it up on the network with this guy. Let's get her plugged up. I'll plug it right back into the back. Tell you what, though, before we fire this NAS off, let's go ahead and get into the mini PC here a little bit. Set that NAS aside, mini PC here. All right, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. That is really all we need to access this NAS. Ah, got a nice little mounting bracket there if you want to use a mounting bracket. Here's a little mini PC itself. That is what I would call a mini PC, huh? For sure. Well, there you go with HDMI. Two HDMI cables. Well, that's a really short one. Let's see how we roll with this. Plug that into there. Plug in our power. Plug it into the back of this. And we're going to need a keyboard and mouse. And we're going to need another network cable. We'll wait. Let me fire this up and let's see what this takes us. So let's fire it up. We got a power light. Let's see if we get a display. Yes, we do. There's our BIOS right there. Then we're going to go through the whole uh, Windows setup here. We'll get Windows all set up on this and we'll see if we can find this NAS. Okay, we got our mini PC fired up here. We got Windows going here, looking good. Everything's connected to the internet. Having a look. Uh, what we need to do now is go to, let's go to Synology, Download Center. We're going to select our Na an ANAS and select the product, DS223. And we want to do Desktop Utilities. And we want to do the Synology Assist. This program searches for Synology servers within the local area network. So let's go ahead and get that downloaded. Take long to do that. Install, agree. And there we go, there's that. Install. So that has now been installed. Now, everybody, it is time to fire up the NAS. There's our Synology Assistant. All right, we got things set up here. Just doing a few updates on this mini PC. We'll let that run. But uh, let's go ahead and I've got the NAS fired up. Um, it's just waiting for us to access it. So I got the Synology Assistant. Let's go ahead and open that up. We will allow access for your firewall. Is looking for this NAS. Ah, there we go. There we go. Password, default password to that. Let's find out. I'm going to connect to that one. I have red. Yes. Okay. And this is the initial setup for Synology NAS there. Install. Automatically download the latest version from Synology website. This is their DSM walkthrough here, initial setup. We'll let them get the latest version. We'll hit next. All data will be deleted. That's fine. And installing this station manager DSM to the NAS. This is all a part of the setup. Here we go, here we go. I'll speed this up a little bit for you. All right, we're going to do a quick reboot here. And let's see where it takes us next. We have now installed our DSM. It's 7.1 at the time of this video. Let's go ahead and click Start. Get started with your Synology. We're going to name this device. Now 
CG. Okay, password. Now for passwords, um, for passwords on a NAS, since that's going to be connected to the internet, you really want to have a very strong password. Very long password here. We're going to go with the 20 character password. Okay, as you can see there, it says strong. That's what you want. Okay, I'm going to leave, allow this Synology NAS to be displayed in Web Assistant. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave that unchecked. I could always enable that at a different time, but we're just going to leave it just like that. We'll go next. Select an update option for your Synology NAS. Notify me when DSM or package updates are available and I will install them manually. I'm going to select notify me. Okay, I chose that because I want to have control over when the updates are done. All right, we'll just go next. Create a Synology account. So we're going to skip the Synology account for now. We can always do that uh, later in on if we want to. We're just going to say skip, skip. We will collect device information and hardware configurations. I'm going to skip creating the Synology account. This is going to be simply a file server. That is it. Nothing else. Let's hit submit. And here we are. Okay, we're going to now it wants you to create a storage pool and volume. We definitely want to do that. Create. Start. RAID. This is a RAID configuration. SHR is what uh, the Synology is the base, base Synology RAID type. So we're going to keep it as SHR. This is the recommended RAID type for beginners. Choosing this type allows you to combine drives of different sizes in the future to optimize volume size and ensure data redundancy. Storage pool description. We're going to call this LCG. Next. Please select at least one drive to create a storage pool with RAID type SHR. We're going to do both. We're going to select both. And we're going to go next. Performing a drive check can automatically reconfigure a drive, thereby reducing the risk of data access errors. We'll go ahead and do a drive. These are, these are brand new drives here, so I don't see where we need to do a drive check. We'll do next. Storage RAID pool, SHR, total capacity. There's two there are terabytes there. We'll do max. We'll do max on the modify allocated max. Max. Next. The file system supports advanced features including shared folders, snapshots, and replication. That's, I think that's what we want. We're going to see it with BTRFS. Next. And this is everything we're going to be looking at here. LCG is the description. SHR RAID type. SATA hard drives. One and two. Uh, volume. Allocated capacity. Yep and hit apply. All the data on the newly added drive will be erased. Are you sure? And we'll click OK. Now what this is going to do is create the RAID. This will take quite some time. But as soon as that RAID and that storage pool and that RAID is uh, finished, um, we can move forward with setting up our shared folder. OK, as you can see this uh, volume now has storage pool is now finished. We have our two drives and we have our volume sitting here ready. Volume one is ready to roll. Both of our hard drives. We have a storage pool here. Very nice. Okay, once you follow all the prompts, you get your D DSM set up there. Get your administrator name and your password set up. You'll be led to this, uh, D uh, this DSM desktop screen. And then you can go in and start setting up your shared folders any way that you like. I've got this one set up here. Got all of the permissions here set. These are the these are the accounts that I've set up from administrator to a couple of others and I've gave read write permissions to this to this LCG shared folder here and that comes up once you map that drive it'll come up as a network drive and you just create a shortcut like this here on the desktop 
double click on that you can open it and you can drag and drop files and folders in here all you like and it all gets saved to the server I'm also going to be plugging in the the four terabyte USB external drive and I'm going to tell the NAS to back up regularly to that device and you can also set up off-site backups there's several different ways of doing that but I won't get into that in this video we're also going to be connecting a UPS device that is an uninterrupted power supply and basically you just configure that in your control panel just go to hardware and power and you'll see uh, UPS setting right here if you click on that once you have your UPS plugged into USB you'll be able to configure uh, configure the shutdown times and such I think it's going to work out pretty good with my little mini PC that I can remote into myself instead of having to go through the web or through the DDNS sometimes office networks aren't set up for DDNS in their router and sometimes you don't have access to the back end of the router so adding a mini PC that's connected to the network with your remote software on it that will then allow you to gain access to this back end of the NAS you don't have to be worried about having to remote into clients computers there on site you just have your own mini PC there to remote into hey thanks for coming along for the ride tell me what you think about this setup here down in the chat what's your experiences with some of these NAS boxes I like Synology I like QNAP too but I think I'm growing to like Synology a little better I'll have links to all these parts below this video. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you soon.